नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग यू आर वाचिंग राज्यसभा टेलीविजन आई एम स्मृति रस्तोगी विद न्यूज टुनाइट लेट्स बिगिन द बुलेटिन विद द टॉप अलायंस इसरोज चंद्रयान टू ऑल सेट टू क्रिएट हिस्ट्री इन अ फ्यू आवर्स फ्रॉम नाउ मून लैंडर विक्रम टू टच डाउन ऑन मून वॉच द स्पेशल टेलीकास्ट ऑफ द इवेंट ऑन राज्यसभा टेलीविजन फ्रॉम इलेवन पी Prime Minister Narendra Modi to watch the moon landing at Isro Center in Bangalore in the company of 70 school students. Students were chosen through a online quiz competition from across the country. India's sex ratio improves from 918 in 2014-15 to 931 in 2018-19. Haryana, Uttarakhand, Delhi, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh judged best states in implementing center's ambitious Beti Bachao Beti Padhao scheme. President Ram Nath Kovind gives away awards for exceptional contribution to Swachh Bharat Mission. Vaishno Devi Shrine Board gets Best Swachh Iconic Place Award. Ministry of Railways judged best in the category of Swachhta Action Plan. Department of Defence gets the Swachhta Pakwada Award. And India has always acted with restraint, but if attacked, will give a befitting reply to any aggressor, asserts Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu. Vice President launches compilation of 95 speeches delivered by President Ram Nath Kovind during his second year in office. India stands on the cusp of making history between 1 a.m. to 2 p.m. tonight. A uh, moon mission Chandrayaan 2's landing module Vikram will start its final descent to touch down on the lunar surface. Israel's scientists are calling the most terrifying moments of nearly 3 month long mission. A successful landing will make India the fourth country after Russia, the US and China to achieve a soft landing on the moon. India will also be the first to launch a mission to the unexplored lunar south pole. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will watch this part of the mission with 60 to 70 high school students from the ISRO center in Bengaluru. The spectacular journey of ISRO's Chandrayaan 2 mission started on 22nd of July with the launch of three-part spacecraft carrying a lunar orbiter, lander and rover on a moon-bound trajectory. Let's retrace the voyage of Chandrayaan 2 recapping the many stupendous maneuvers it had to make, the challenges it has overcome to reach this far. to finally see the moon within its grasp so remember 1 am to 2 am tonight will be the most crucial moment for chandrayaan 2 mission Chandrayaan 2 was successfully launched at 2:43 p.m. on 22nd of July. Between 24th July and 6th of August, the spacecraft used Earth's gravity or orbit raising maneuvers to increase its own velocity to conserve fuel. The final orbit raising took Chandrayaan 2 1,43,585 kilometers from the Earth. This is when the critical maneuver of translunar injection was performed where the spacecraft's trajectory was adjusted to reach the moon. On 14th August Chandrayaan 2 was placed in the moon bound path called the translunar injection or TLI. It was a maneuver that set Chandrayaan 2 on a week long path to reach the moon. The maneuver placed the spacecraft on a 266 by 413623 orbit 
Adjustments were made to make the planned landing date of September 7th, despite the one-week delay in the mission's launch. Between 14th and 20th of August, Chandrayaan-2 was put on a lunar transfer trajectory. The spacecraft left Earth's orbit and began its 384,000-kilometer journey to the Moon. The last of Chandrayaan-2's Earth-bound orbits brought it halfway to the Moon. From here, it used its thrusters to come under the Moon's orbit of influence. When the Moon approached the Chandrayaan 2's farthest point from the Earth, its onboard thrusters fired up and slowed itself down for a controlled transfer from the Earth's orbit of influence and into the Moon's orbit. The lunar bound phase took 13 days. The lunar orbital insertion ended with Chandrayaan-2 orbiter lander composite entering a circular 100-kilometer altitude orbit around the Moon. ISRO's moon lander Vikram is on its way to a region on the lunar surface that is little explored till date. Most lunar landings have taken place in the Northern Hemisphere or in the Equatorial region. Also consider that ISRO's budget has been less than a 1-20th of NASA. The 1,000 crore rupees Chandrayaan-2 mission cost less than what it took Hollywood to make the movie Avengers Endgame. At around 1.55 a.m. tonight, ISRO's Chandrayaan-2 mission will create history when it lands on the lunar surface. What makes this landing different from the others that have happened so far is that this will be the first time any nation has reached this close to the moon's south pole. Vikram Chandrayaan-2's lander that separated from the orbiter on Monday has already performed two maneuvers to lower its altitude for a perfect touchdown between 1.30 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. on Saturday. Touchdown will be preceded by some very precise maneuvers that Vikram will conduct. At roughly 1.38 a.m., rough braking will begin when Vikram is about 30 kilometers away from the lunar surface. Ten minutes later, the lander will begin fine braking at a distance of less than 8 kilometers from the surface of the moon. Two minutes later, at 1.50 a.m., Vikram lander will begin local navigation in its bid to find the perfect spot for landing near the moon's south pole. It will also send its first image of the moon's surface to Earth another couple of minutes later at 1.52 a.m. And a minute after that, at 1.53 a.m., Vikram will make a soft landing on the moon, creating history and crossing a very important milestone in India's space sojourn. And the rover is inside the lander, so both are now orbiting around the moon. The orbiter will continue in its determined orbit. The lander is coming closer and closer to the moon as it is moving across the moon. So the thrusters have to do the reverse of what was done initially because once it is caught by the gravity of the moon falling down, we don't want it to go and impact. So the thrusters are going to decelerate, decelerate, decelerate so that there is a soft landing on the moon and the lander settles down. And before this, the in the orbit, there was a check also to see that what is the location it should land in, exact location, just to avoid any mishaps. And then following that, I think the opening of the door and the ramp and the rover to come out take its little, little steps around in that region. The lander also with all of its payloads to scan material around it and the rover with the two payloads on it uh, to do very detailed study of rocks, minerals in that region. It will be Vikram's decision on where exactly it wants to make the final landing by studying the lunar surface when it would be 100 meters above it. If everything goes well, it will touch down 78 seconds later. ISRO had chosen two landing sites, a primary landing site and a secondary one, each with two landing zones. The preferred landing site is between two craters, Manzinus and Sympelius, about 350 kilometers north of the South Pole. 
At a height of 100 meters from the lunar surface, Vikram will hover for a few seconds before the final descent. There are several considerations that have been taken in deciding the landing sites. The most important among them is that both sides should have the sun's elevation at more than 6 degrees on landing day to ensure enough illumination for the lunar craft to capture images. If it can land on the first zone, within 65 seconds, Vikram will reach a height of 10 meters directly. However, if it chooses the second landing site, Vikram will use 40 seconds to first descend to a height of 60 meters, then drop to 10 meters in the next 25 seconds. Once Vikram reaches an altitude of 10 meters from the surface, it takes about 13 seconds for touchdown. Vikram's final descent from the lunar orbit would have started at an altitude of 35 kilometers. Pragyan rover will move out to roam the lunar surface. This will be between 5.30 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. Pragyan will carry out research, including a thorough mapping of the moon's resources, looking for the presence of water and clicking high-resolution images. Actually, Chandrayaan-2 is, uh, though we call it as a Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft, actually it is uh, three spacecraft put into one. Okay, So, uh, one is uh, the orbiter, which will keep going around the moon. Uh, initially, ISRO planned that it will go, keep going around the moon for one year, but now we think that uh, most likely it will keep around the moon for two years because there are adequate uh, fuel. And the second is what is called as the Vikram lander and Pragyan rover combo. When it lands on moon, the belly will open and the rover will come and uh, crawl on the surface of moon. Vikram and Pragyan's lifespan is 14 days. After that, there will be another 14 days of darkness on the area of the moon where they are and the temperature could dip to minus 170 degrees Celsius. Chandrayaan-2 orbiter's lifespan is estimated at one year but it may keep working longer. As the world waits with bated breath to witness the historic spectacle, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will see the historic landing live from ISRO's control room along with some school children. Chandrayaan 2's success will make India only the fourth country after the US, Russia and China to pull off a soft landing on the moon. With inputs from Aruna Thakur, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. But why exactly is Chandrayaan-2 heading towards the moon's south pole? What does soft landing a spacecraft means and how is Chandrayaan-2 different from Chandrayaan-1? Take a look at this report. The countdown is underway for moon lander Vikram's final descent. After its historic landing on the lunar south pole, ISRO's second mission to the moon will make India the only country to manage a soft landing on the lunar soil. <laughs> Till date, 38 attempts at soft landing have been made on the moon's surface. 20 alone have succeeded. A soft landing does not result in any damage to spacecraft, which means the spacecraft remains operational and fit to carry out experiments. For a soft landing, Vikram's onboard navigation, guidance and control system and its propulsion system will have to work in perfect unison. In the year 2008, Chandrayaan-1's moon impact probe hard landed on the moon and was destroyed on impact. The impact released subsurface debris that was later analyzed for water ice by instruments on Chandrayaan-1. The presence of water on the moon was later confirmed by international missions, including NASA. India's historic moon mission started 11 years ago, when in September 2008, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh gave approval for Chandrayaan-2 mission. The mission finally took off on 22nd July 2019 on a 3,84,400 km journey towards the moon. Once it lands, Vikram, and the rover Pragyan it is carrying will conduct scientific experiments on the moon for one lunar day, which is equal to 14 Earth days. Chandrayaan-2 will be operational for one year to conduct various orbital experiments. The 978 crore rupees unmanned moon mission is expected to shed light on a completely unexplored section of the moon's south polar region. 
The South Polar region is among the coldest spots on the solar system. It has not received sunlight for billions of years. Scientists believe water exists in the permanently shadowed areas around it. In addition, South Pole region had craters that are coal traps and contain a fossil record of the early solar system that could help us understand the origins of life. The mission is also expected to demonstrate key technologies for end-to-end -end lunar mission capability, including soft landing and roving on the lunar surface. It also aims to further expand the knowledge about the Moon through a detailed study of its topography, mineralogy, surface chemical composition, thermophysical characteristics and atmosphere for a better understanding of the Moon's origin and evolution. Many aspects of these uh, are going to be crucial for much later missions uh, in the sense of looking at what is present on the Moon is in our backyard. But still there are so many uh, aspects of uh, moon studies where it is possible to make crucial contributions and that is what this mission is uh, setting out to do. To know the mineral distribution and particularly those minerals which may be of use for future missions which may take off from the moon. So we would be in that uh, kind of you know no, not race but in that process of being able to do that much later in future through this mission. Let's understand how the spacecraft will land. The Vikram lander will descend onto the lunar surface. The lander will perform a series of maneuvers to bring itself to a 90 degree angle with respect to the lunar surface and identify a suitable landing site. Upon landing, the lander Vikram will release the rover Pragyan to explore the lunar surface for one lunar day. The orbiter will continue to circle around the Moon for about a year. The key difference between India's first and second Moon mission is that Chandrayaan-2 is the first mission in which ISRO is attempting to land an Earth-made object on a celestial body. While Chandrayaan-1 was an orbiter, meaning satellites that were sent to orbit the Moon and collect data. Chandrayaan-2 is a combo. It has an orbiter as well as a lander and a rover. Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft made more than 3,400 orbits around the Moon and remained operational for 312 days. Chandrayaan-2's orbiter will continue its mission for around a year. In its path-breaking discovery, Chandrayaan-1 not only discovered traces of water on the Moon, it also detected magnesium, aluminium and silicon. Global imaging was another achievement of Chandrayaan-1 mission. Chandrayaan-2 aims to widen these scientific objectives by way of soft landing on the Moon and deploying a rover to study the lunar surface. It will be the precursor to the Grand Gaganyaan mission that will send three Indians to space on an Indian spacecraft. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Chandrayaan-2, India's second lunar mission, aims to go where no country has ever gone before. The Moon's South Pole region, where, among other things, it will look for lunar water. Launched on 22nd July, India's Moon mission is all set to land near the Moon's South Pole. Our next report takes a detailed look at Chandrayaan-2 that weighs over 3,000 kilograms and carries a suite of 14 experiments that are distributed among the orbiter, the lander and the rover. Three, two, one, zero. The fully indigenous mission Chandrayaan-2 has three modules, an orbiter, a lander named Vikram and a rover named Pragyan. The orbiter will orbit the moon at an altitude of 100 kilometers. There are eight instruments on the orbiter including a laser retro-reflector from NASA, which is the only foreign payload in the mission. The orbiter is a box-shaped craft with an orbital mass of 2,379 kilograms and solar panels capable of generating electricity. The orbiter high-resolution camera will conduct high-resolution observations of the landing site prior to the separation of the lander from the orbiter. The orbiter's structure was manufactured by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. 
The five-legged Vikram lander is a module that will enable the delivery of the Pragyan rover to the lunar surface while conducting a few experiments of its own. The rover will roll out once the lander has successfully landed at the desired spot. The lander consists of several instruments or payloads that will be constantly carrying out experiments throughout its mission time. Vikram has been developed to operate for one lunar day which is equivalent to 14 Earth days. During this time period, Vikram will constantly be communicating with the Indian Deep Space Network in Bialalu near Bengaluru. The same network will be used by the orbiter and the rover for communication. Vikram weighs 1,471 kilograms, including the 27 kilogram Pragyan rover inside it. It is capable of generating about 650 watts of electricity. <laughs> कहा जा सकता है कि स्वच्छता ही स्वास्थ्य की मास्टर की यानी कुंजी है मुझे विश्वास है कि आप सबसे प्रेरणा लेकर हर भारतवासी स्वच्छता द्वारा राष्ट्र निर्माण में अपनी सार्थक भूमिका निभाएगा और ऐसे स्वच्छ भारत की नींव पर ही स्वस्थ भारत और समृद्ध भारत का निर्माण होगा and Vice President M. Venkya Naidu released a compilation of selected speeches of President Ramnath Kovind at an event in New Delhi titled The Republican Ethnic Volume 2 in English and Lok Tantra Keswar Khand Do in Hindi. The books are a collection of 95 of President Kovind's selected speeches made in the second year of his office. Addressing the gathering, Vice President M. Venkya Naidu said, that in President's addresses, he finds an earnest call for inclusiveness, rare pragmatism, a close connect with people and a vision for a new India. He always uh, insists on inclusive growth. A country of 128 crores, huge country with 28 states, with 700 plus languages, with different religions, with different communities and different social strata. What is required, the priority is to have inclusive growth so that everybody in the country should feel that he is also partner in the development of story of the country. That's why the president always guides us in that direction. Being a seasoned and distinguished lawyer, Honorable President is aware of the power and the challenges of the profession. Being a firm believer of social change, through constitutional methods, Sri Kovinji always emphasizes the potential of legal profession in delivery of justice to the poorest of the poor. And Vice President M. Venkya Naidu has called upon the educational institutions to partner in programs such as Fit India and Kelo India to encourage students to lead an active life. Addressing the Silver Jubilee celebrations of Maharaja Agrisen College in New Delhi on Friday, Naidu stressed on the need to provide a multidisciplinary and holistic education and asked the academicians to promote critical thinking, problem solving and global outlook among students. We are fortunate to have a demographic dividend of 65% of our population are youngsters who are below 35 and 32 ages, 32 years. No other country in the world has got this advantage. If you put your house in order, if you evolve broad consensus, if you pursue with vigor and then fight out the social evils and also economic evils and take corrective actions, India will become unstoppable. I'm very sure about it. And Haryana, Uttarakhand, Delhi, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh have been felicitated for their performance in successfully implementing the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao scheme. Minister for Women and Child Development, Smriti Rani, felicitated states and districts for their performance at an event in the national capital. Districts include Mah Mahindragarh and Bhivani of Haryana, Udham Singh Nagar of Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh's Itawa. The objective of the program is to felicitate states and districts for their good performance in improving sex ratio at birth. The 
2015 से ये सफर शुरू हुआ था राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर लिंग अनुपात 918 था और आज 931 है चार कदम सरकारें और समाज चली और तेरह पॉइंट्स का इजाफा हुआ एंड दैट्स ऑल वी हैव फॉर यू इन दिस एडिशन ऑफ न्यूज टू नाइट थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग नमस्कार